Hi, it's Natasha. And Khalil. And we are the co-hosts of... Welcome and free. free! Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in to our 122nd episode of Woke and Free. Happy, 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 happy new year, y'all. I hope you are starting off the year really, really excited. Uh, A, because you're listening to Woke and Free. But uh, if you've been tuning in every week for Woke and Free, you know that we have Woke and Free Wednesday. Every Wednesday, we have a new episode. And we at Woke and Free are all about being real and honest with each other and you. We talk about everything and anything important to us, you, the world, and nothing is off the table. This week, we are talking about something really interesting and we're really looking forward to hearing your thoughts, which is, would you give your life for a stranger? But before we dive deep into that subject, we have a couple of questions to ask you, aka my monologue time. So let's get ready, guys. (laughs) exciting Uh, stuff there super exciting yes so if you have downloaded the podbean app and you're listening to the show through that yay bravo 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 because it means that you can actually put in your comments you can join the conversation which is what we're looking to have every single week next if you are catching the show on another platform say you're like hey tasha i love woken free but i hear you guys on iTunes or TuneIn or Google Play or SoundCloud or iHeartRadio or Spotify. Yay! We appreciate the love on any platform that you're giving to us. So just make sure no matter where you're catching the show, you are subscribed and following the show so that you get uh, the episodes every single week. And then, of course, make sure you also have uh, go- gone onto WokenFree.com and subscribe via email. That way you'll get the email notifications every time there's a new episode. So you are not missing a beat. Now, of course, sharing is caring. So make sure you are sharing in the new year and you are sharing Woken Free with your friends, your family, your coworkers, with strangers, y'all. We got to make this as big and loud as possible. And then, of course, on social media, if you are interested in hollering at us, you can easily find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, and even Pinterest at Woken Free. So make sure you uh, are liking and 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 joining our conversations online as well. And then lastly, if you have like two minutes, we would what? Need you to review the show. We want to get as many stars, five stars as possible. (laughs) Make sure you're giving stars, five stars on iTunes, on any platform that you can rate the show on. So just go to WokenFree.com, click on the listen tab, and then you can pick your platforms that you not only can subscribe to the show on, but you can also give us reviews there as well. Each week, we like to share a little bit about us before we dive into the topic for the episode last week we asked what was your favorite thing to do for christmas this week we're asking would you rather think with your right brain or your left brain what kind of question is that Kalu? that's one that i think you've been asking me every other day you're out of your mind you've asked me that before <laughs> lies, and <fairy> <laughs> lies never, and fairy tales you never asked about which brain that we should be thinking with I think another question comes to mind when you say that to me. Oh. Yeah, and that's something that's not a PG-13 question. No, but we're talking about halves of the brains. Ah, the halves and the have yeah. nots, eh? If you call it that, I don't know. <laughs> Shout out to that's Tyler Perry lingo. and the own network. Uh, I don't know. My answer is I don't know. Uh, probably both because I'm extra like that. <laughs> wow. Because I got that's it like answer. that. Yeah, I got it like that. How about you? <laughs> Mine is both, but it's both because I don't know what the difference is. That's so. not very woke and free of you. <laughs> <laughs> That's real woke. Go with both just in case so you don't miss out. True yeah, that. Yeah, see, what if I miss out on the other one? Why well, wouldn't have one of something when you can have two? Because I don't know if the <laughs> left brain controls the right side and the right brain controls the left side. I, think, I don't know. So I'll just take both of them. Because I want to make use of both sides of my bodies. Woken Free Nation, which <laughs> which it's part hard. are which part of your brain controls you? Are, are you on the both like us or are you, I don't know, or you're looking it up right now and then you'll you'll share in the comments. Let, let us know where you're at with that. Yeah, I don't know. but. Mm-hmm. We're just going to jump into it then. Yes. Would you give your life for a stranger? Yes, 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 yes. Always. Uh, For me, I... Always? Yes, always. (laughs) uh, (laughs) I'm very adamant about this for a specific reason, being that I believe that good has no nuance, meaning... 
for me to expect for someone else to risk their life for me, I have to be willing to risk my life for them. And that is, I think, a tenant of karma. I think it's a tenant of uh, the, you know, just kind of being a human being in this world. And we have to be willing to put our lives on the line for the greater good of, of that person or, or just the opportunity in front of you. And, you know, for me, I think it comes down to just being a human being, being compassionate. And we owe this not only to ourselves, but to others in this world. And no one is more important than anyone else. So we should all be willing to live and die by the sword. How about you? Wow. Mm-hmm. That's one way to put it. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, for me, it's not that straightforward and a hard decision. I say mm-hmm. it depends on the circumstances for me. So in my mind, I go through a quick process. And usually it's how dangerous is the current situation. So mm-hmm. I'll look at the environment at hand and be like, if there's a fire all around and there's no path to the person, then I'm not jumping in there because then we, then you have two, two victims in the situation. Mm-hmm. The next thing that I ask is who is this person? So depending on this person, I might not actually, well, if they're a complete stranger, I don't know much about them, but mm-hmm. if I see that they have like a bunch of weapons on them, you know, I'm not going to go after them either because they might attack me. Mm-hmm. So. The, depending on that person and what, what they look like they're doing, I might not jump in there because, yeah, they might see me as a threat and mm-hmm. hurt me in the instance. So mm-hmm. that's definitely a factor. And then I always would want to know, is anybody else available to help? Shameful. So if I, but this is smart because <laughs> it's like if someone falls in a river and you just jump in in the raging river, you're both going over the, over the cliff or the waterfall. Mm-hmm. So, but if you, did, but if said, if you look around and you say, Hey, can you get, you know, give me a hand? I'm going to go and reach for this person. Then the other person can hold on to you so you don't float down the river. So mm-hmm. it's definitely the thing to think about. So once I get those things straight, if it still makes sense, then I can go and help this stranger. You know, it's interesting at the end of this assessment that you're doing, the person is drowned or burned. That's why it's a quick process. Uh, it's a quick process because mm. you can, the, the, that's easy to assess the situation. You look and it's like, all right, this looks crazy. I'm out of here. <laughs> but Smart. <laughs> you can just do that. You can look around like the meerkats. They look and then they're out. Look how fast they do it. See, that's that's exactly how fast I go through this process. You got to look. It's like look, see, and listen. It's like that kind of thing. Like there's those acronyms that you do. See no evil, hear no evil, do no evil, <laughs> speak no evil. So see, I go through that just to make mm. sure this is a situation that I can actually help out. And I do it quickly. I don't, I mean, there's more things I could go through, but that if I did that, then probably it would be too late. Gotcha. I think I can do these three things really quickly, though. You know what I could imagine also? What? Like you would be in that river drowning and someone yeah. would play this episode for you and say, we're going to go through yeah, this. Yeah, I would hope so. And, and, tell and I would clap, too. And you would clap up yeah. and drown Yeah, I would. Just to let them know. Good choice. And I put thumbs up, two thumbs up. Yeah. I was like, uh, at least the situation That's very was... fair to me. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you're, That's no, why it's, you're trifling. No, it's fair to them because if they don't have the tools to rescue uh, me, why are they killing themselves? It doesn't instead, make sense. Instead, they could just play Woken Free. Yep. Well, they could play the episode. <laughs> if they, well, they should have already... I would be mad at them because they should have memorized this already because I already told them the process. You shouldn't Smart. be playing it. You should already Smart. know it. And you should have listened to it five times over by now. So see Sweet that, Jesus. yeah, I know you got to make your process. You got to be quick with it. You can't just well, this take is your what time. I love about our show because you and I usually stand on opposite sides of the, <laughs> of the spectrum when it comes to making decisions. <laughs> and we somehow yeah. have to find a way in the middle just to go on with life. Well, yeah, because your, your thing is funny, too, because it's like you're like, oh, that person's in danger and you walk right off the cliff and then you're gone. Yeah, because you tried to save them. You didn't look around and check your situation. No, I didn't it's say that. I, wouldn't, I would just said always. blindly say someone but i am going to i'm not going to make an assessment to decide if i'm going to save you the goal yeah, is to see? save you and then make the decision as to how to do it not should i save you and then can i save you and then will i save you and why will i save you you're doing the who what when where why and how of the saving well mine mostly comes down to ken though there is a there is a how but mine mm-hmm. is definitely ken because if there's an issue you can just not work out and you're taken out well, so i'm just gonna make pray to for me. you that you stay far far away from those rivers <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I have a question for you now, which is, would the average person risk their life for a stranger? Well, I actually found an article from Vox, and this article was called The Science of Extreme Altruism, Why People Risk Their Lives to Save Strangers by Joseph Schromberg. And since 1904, the Carnegie Hero Fund was awarded medals to over 95,000 people. And every single one of these people risked his or her life to an extraordinary degree in attempting to save the life of another person. In most cases, the people they saved were actually total strangers. They also talked about a study by 
Georgetown's Abigail Marsh that found differences in one part of the brain. And it was saying that the right, um, I guess amygdala, that's the yeah. amygdala of people who donated kidneys to complete strangers. And what they saw is that the people that were uh, d- diagnosed like psychopaths, they have like exactly opposite variations of the people that were donating their kidneys to complete strangers. Oh, uh, interesting. They actually saw a biological difference. Mm-hmm. So, I, I mean, answering your question is I would think that the average person probably would because I don't think the average person's a psychopath. And <laughs> even though this is one small study, yes. I think that just gives you like some insight that people like humans are wired to help others, I think. Mm-hmm. And I think that's generally true. I think that's how human society has flourished. And mm-hmm. We're generally wired to help each other. So I think that the average person would actually do that. I Absolutely. Mean, and this article kind of supports it just through biology itself. Mm-hmm. So I found an article in U.S. News uh, where uh, what makes a hero the surprisingly the surprising science of selflessness. Reporter Elizabeth Sovabada. Sovabada? Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Good try. Sovabada. <laughs> Something like that. Attempts to figure out why people are willing to sacrifice themselves for others. And perhaps surprisingly, some people may be genetic hardwired to help others, while some so- sociologists think a sense of selflessness can be instilled with the pra- with the practice. And U.S. News kind of talked to her about some of the theories about self-sacrifice and what it means in the wake of some, some horrible tragedies like the Boston bombings and West Texas disaster. And there were some like really interesting points shared. So I'd love to kind of bring that here to the Woken Free family. So let's get into it. So Reading from the article, there's a theory called group selection that humans might have evolved selfless traits not to help an individual to survive, but to sacrifice themselves for the good of the group. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? It is the question posed in the article. It's something of a controversy in the scientific community, but some researchers believe we help others because groups where members are inclined to cooperate tend to do better from generation to generation than groups with infighting. You might indirectly improve your own genetic prospects by contributing to the well-being of the group. So that speaks yeah, to kind of the article you refer to. Continuing on, the other another question posed was there have there have also been studies that take a look at charity. When we do something selfless such as donate the pleasure centers of our brain respond, correct? That's true. Some studies have found that when you do do something selfless, such as give money to charity, the part of the brain that processes rewards lights up on fMRI scans. In some sense, when you're giving to others, you might feel like when you're getting a gift yourself or winning the lottery. Helping others gives us a feeling when we're we're making a difference and makes us happy because we feel as if we have a purpose. And I personally can attest to that. Every Christmas, I think for the past couple of Christmas, one of the first things I do is wake up and I donate. And I donate to charities regarding animals. Shout out to my beautiful elephants of the world. I love you very deeply. They love you too. Uh, yes, I have them tattooed on my body. I love you deeply uh, i give to kitten poos little cats i give to uh to, to aspca i give to various wow. places because it to me that's one of the greatest christmas gifts is to give to others to give us to receive it's a secret tenant uh the a law of attraction tenant and a biblical christian tenant so i love to give and and i think it, it does make you feel good so it's kind of like selfish in that sense yeah. where it's like you're doing something for you but you're bettering others but again we talked about this in a previous episode I would rather people do that so that others could prosper, even if it's from a selfish perspective of, I just want to feel good in the moment of giving. Like, I'm okay yeah, with that. That just it brings up another thing when people get mad at celebrities for yeah. showing themselves off donating. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, why are you being mad at them? They're donating nonetheless. Exactly. Who cares about the reason if it's to help them? Because guess what? If it does help them, they get more money and they donate more, right? Exactly. So it's like a loop. It's a loop that works mm-hmm. out if well. Each other well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it works out pretty well. So don't complain when celebrities are donating money. Like, that's uh-huh. that's the worst you thing. You know what it is? It's Never the contrast. Like, people get salty because they have, <laughs> like, their small that. nonprofits in their local towns and, no, you know, the press never want to give them any play. But then the minute a celebrity comes into town and does, like, one thing, Thing. They're like, why does that person get news coverage from 20 different outlets? And I'm here, you know, like, for instance, like the Me Too movement, the uh, uh, Tawana Burke had been yeah. doing this for 10 years before Alyssa Milano came into the picture and helped kind of push the movement forward. And, you know, some people might be salty and say, why exactly for the past 10 years or over 10 years, this woman had been working hard you know, and doing her work. And then go ahead, watch this. Mm-hmm. I, I would because I know it's true, too. 
if they're on social media, I'm going to say, how many celebrities do you follow and, and, and like their posts and everything? And how many of your family members and your local charities are you actually and friends? Are you actually following, liking their posts? I think they're yeah. they're participating in the same thing. They're mm-hmm. paying more attention to celebrities than exactly. the local people. So exactly. I think that's funny. Anybody talking crap about, oh, mm-hmm. celebrity comes and now it became big. It's like, yeah, because you're feeding into the system, aren't you? We all do. You right? say, yeah. We, so I don't we, complain about right, that because I do that too. Not I mean, everyone has a beehive, right? Yeah, like, it's we, like that. Yeah, yeah, you feed into that. Celebrities feed into something into us that we just are insatiable. Like we can't get enough of it. So yeah, and then you will you'll kind of overlook smaller projects exactly. that maybe are just as good. But exactly. you like nah, that's not interesting. Do our celebrities <laughs> are they the best singers in the world? Mm, not necessarily, right? There are a lot of singers that have no play that no they never become famous, but that had phenomenal voices, but. You know, hey, yeah, so, it is what it is. Stop being salty, y'all. It's a new year. Yeah, I don't think that's great. <laughs> hey there. Do you have a book that you want to share with the Woken Free Nation? Are you a business owner looking to share your product or service with the podcasting world? Well, guess what? You can book an ad with us on our Contact Us page at WokenFree.com. We're super excited to speak with you about curating a unique ad that will get your message across the Woken Free platform. So go to the Contact Us page at WokenFree.com. That is W-O-K-E-N-F-R-E-E.com. Because Woken Free is more than a podcast. It's a way of life and offers an innovative way to promote your platform in the exploding podcasting space. Now, I mean, we kind of we kind of talked about the whys, but mm-hmm. why do you think any one would risk their life for a stranger so the the motivations i think in addition to kind of like ultimately some of the things we already talked about i just think that it probably some of like similar to a charity thing like it probably is going to feel really good if you're there on like the the boston mar like horror like that happened right when people were having to help people when they were there was, I think there were bombs set off at that marathon, right? The Boston. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you're helping people and their, you know, limbs are everywhere and blood's everywhere. It probably feels really amazing to be able to help people and help get them to safety. So I think there's probably like an adrenaline boost. Also just like the need and the want to, to, to help people is drive some people, right? Why do some people want to be nurses and doctors? Some people have a desire to help others. And then also, I think it, it even from a selfish perspective, right? If you help and save 20 lives, you know, that, that's going to be an incredible story. That's going to be an incredible book. That could be a tour that like you could create a whole platform based on doing good. So yeah, could, yeah. I think you can be like altruistic or I forget the alter, the other name for it, like altruist, altruism. And then there's like, an alternative to that but uh i don't know sadistic <laughs> no answer you're the question talking about the alternate oh good lord are that what you're talking no. about no altruism is like it's no like, i know what altruism yeah. but, but you're trying to talk about the opposite altru- yeah that's so it's not a sadist <laughs> no just answer the question <laughs> <laughs> okay, i was trying to figure it out i don't know what the opposite is we'll i mean think about it <laughs> selfish i mean yeah i, I guess yeah I don't know. There's, Maybe, there's another selfish, opposite. Yeah. I don't know what the word is, but I mean, I just uh, looking at the articles and what you mentioned, I, th- I think that biology is like a big factor. Mm. It's not just what people find moral. And I know that you can kind of teach people to help others, but I don't think you even need to do it because. I think humans have like maybe we've been evolved that way from mm-hmm. the, that the people that were actually more helping those were the people that survived compared to the people that were more selfish they probably got kicked out of the group that's gotcha. what I think mm-hmm. I think it's like a part of evolution and, Darwin but, yeah <laughs> it's kind of like that yeah there was some evolution in humans the humans that have want to help each other they were they survived and they were kept within the group and that's why we saw within the studies that. They had the different, uh, their brains actually looked different compared to the people that were outliers, you know, gotcha. the psychopath and people with disorders and yes. that sort of Dahmer thing. Dahmer didn't probably have that gene yeah. within him. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> yes. I mean, yeah, I guess you could try to say that people just do it because uh, it's a selfish thing, though, because they're trying to get the group to, mm-hmm. they, to they, further along. Yeah, they know that when the group is further, further along, that it helps them in the end. So it's like, why wouldn't I help this person who mm-hmm. can uh, uh, then help the group? 
It's interesting. Also, another selfish point, and I, we talked about this when we were getting ramped up for doing this, having this conversation, which is the idea that, like, for parents, right? Parents have kids, and they send their kids out into the world, and, you know, it's a scary place. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if you're going to see your kid at the end of the night, which is really a scary notion. I'm not trying to upset anyone, but it's true. Like, you start the day, you don't have, you don't know what's going to happen. Everyone could die. No one could die, right? It's, yeah. it's all up in the air. And at the end of the day, if I were a mother, and I was, I had my kid going out to like a, a group outing and my kid was struggling or or their life was threatened like I would hope that someone would see that child and want to help them and so like how can I live in this world with wanting that to happen as a is, if, as a possibility if that happened I don't obviously wish harm upon anyone or anyone's child but if my own child was in pain I would want someone to help them but yet I wouldn't be willing to go and do the same for someone else's child like I just I'm, I'm a strong advocate for karma and like if you want you have to be willing to do the same for others like you, to me it doesn't work out you can't yeah. expect people to feed into you and not feed into them like it that's just not going to work it, the universe is going to say this, try again this is great that's why I love this next part that we're yes. going to start because this is going to really the test your to test yeah this is going to really test your All mind right, let's and we'll see, see how, if you're ready for it here we go yo here we go yo so what's the what's the, what's the scenario it's scenario time let's get it started scenario one Catherine was walking alone on a bridge outside a large, bustling city. She looked out across the water and then looked down by the shore. She saw a person on a boat actually strangling another person. She could try to intervene or just call the police. What should she do? Really? That's how we're going to jumpstart this conversation? (laughs) (laughs) That's how we get it started. There's a reason we're why talking you about saving sadistic. strangers. Yep. No, we're, we're, we're thinking about what should we do in, All right. in well, harm, so harsh cases. I'm going to put on a couple of hats, right? All right. <laughs> so one one of my thinking hats tells me, yes, call the authorities, right? Uh, uh, people like me who have legal backgrounds uh, <laughs> uh, believe in, in the power of government and, and believe in the power of uh, following regulations. And when you see something, you say something, I yeah. have got had that um, sketched into my mind for many, many years. So I would definitely call the police. I would definitely tell them where I'm at and what I'm, uh, what I'm observing. I would also probably document, take a picture quickly. And then I would then probably go down to try to, or yell at first, try to see if I can verbally stop the ha- what's happening. And if not, and the person is still doing what they're doing, and ir- irregardless, or not, regardless of what yeah. I say or do, then I would have to, yeah, physically intervene because that person being strangled should not die that way. That's terrible. Mm-hmm. So you would call and then you would try to intervene is what you're yes, saying? Yes, I would do both. I w- it wouldn't be one or the other. I would oh, call right. the authorities. I would document, take a footage, p- maybe a little bit of footage and take some pictures and then go down and have to, and then verbally try to interact. And then if that's doing nothing, then I'd have to physically interact. That would be my last resort. But those would be the sequencing of things I would do. Okay. And you? Interesting. You keep on moving, right? Definitely not. <laughs> Definitely not. No, of course not. I call the police. Oh, but, the first oh, but thing. wait. Do you have to not be in New York for this to happen? No, it doesn't matter, Ryan. Oh, okay. This is easy because look, she's. I'm, and I'm just saying. Yeah, if I was her in the situation, this is easy. Mm-hmm. You're on. You're on the bridge. The person can't get. There's nothing the person can do to you from there. So I know that if I call the police, I'm straight. And I mean, I, I depending on the, the how far they are, I could try to scream at them and say, "Hey, I got you on camera." Yeah. Because they can't. There's nothing they could do. But all based on that, I wouldn't go down there no matter what. Okay. <laughs> I would even try to intervene. I mean, I would you know, try because the problem every is other way not to have to. Yeah, because how do you get down from the bridge? Yeah. And, and by the time you get down there, that person could be dead. And guess what? You're the next target now because you're the yeah. only you're the sole witness. But yeah, I would also so, try to invoke. Other I'm not going too. on that I bridge. To, I would just try to yell at them to stop. I mean, and, I, and if other people are coming by, I'd, hey, stop, like, bring a crowd towards try. it so that people, because mo- you're less likely to do craziness. But just remember, that she was walking alone on a bridge when she saw this. So. I know, but someone else can come by, though. You can yeah, yell. See, I, I yell very loudly. There's no way that I'm going down there, though. That's all yeah. I know. I'll call the police, though. Why not? I mean, I saw this And you crime. have to be careful, because also you what? don't want to, like, because you could, like, in th- when you were just th- saying that, I was thinking, oh, maybe you could try to pick up stones nearby. But you don't want to, like, hit the person in the yeah, head. Yeah, you can knock them out. Kill yeah, them. you could actually cause a concussion you, from the bridge and then you are being you charged with murder. murder yeah and the other person gets away because they might just That's not they might leave town I'm so sorry. Oh, 
<laughs> yeah, it is. People do crazy stuff. I don't know why you would try to. Yeah, don't try to attack them. But yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that though. Yeah, don't attack the that's person. Crazy. Too. Yeah, but even imagine if you did try to intervene, and as you walked by, you, like you kicked the person, and they fell off the boat by mistake. You know, as you got on, you opened the whatever, like yeah. the little door, and they fl- like, went into the ocean, and then. What do you do yeah, then? Yeah, yeah, you have to know. And there, <laughs> are, there are rules <laughs> yeah, and you be careful. of being, like, when you help people, like, there are duties that you owe, right? So, so you have to be careful about when you help people, like, how you go about it. And, yeah, like, try to do it from a distance as much as possible because yeah, once I mean, you get more physically involved, it, it becomes, it, it creates even legal what you situations do. for yourself. So. Yeah, it depends on the situation. But this situation's a little bit... It's a little uh, a strange situation because you don't know what can go down on I that I feel like book. I want to watch a movie with that beginning scene, though. That seems really interesting as, like, a movie. Yeah. I, like, yeah, that would I be just, like, dropped in the scene and you're like, oh, what is that? Yeah, <laughs> but that'd be crazy. Yeah, yeah to yeah. see that. It's, I mean, it's possible to, to happen. Mm-hmm. Scenario two. Janaya was just robbed at knife point while waiting for the train. The robber tripped and fell onto the tracks while trying to make his escape. Should Janiyah try and help the mugger or leave his fate up to the universe? That's like deeply funny and deeply sad at the same time. That's amazing. <laughs> right. That's amazing. Are you joking right now? <laughs> Be like, is this, is, am I being pumped? I know. So you might think that too. <laughs> this is a joke. You can think that this can't even be real. Be like, you better get your life together. Uh, first of all, wowzers. Uh, so this is really kind of speaking to compassion, right? Yeah. When someone does wrong to you. Can you see past the error of their ways and, and still help them out? Cause at the end of the day, that person's still a human being. They might still have family. They, there's, yeah. So ultimately I told you there's no nuance to good. So even though the person tried to harm, harm me, I would uh, try to help the mugger because at the end of the day, you know, they most likely will give you back their bag, your bag. And if not, then I mean, hey, you have a really incredible story that can turn into a They rob problem. you again. Yeah, they might <laughs> rob you again. You saved them and they pull the knife they out might, again. You're yeah. like, oh man, I just saved you. Well, I'm taking more now. Yeah, I mean, if, they, if, those they, boots if now. they have a heart, most likely they would say, ah, my bad, I'm sorry, and really try to, uh, yeah, kind of <laughs> rectify the, the error of their way. <laughs> <laughs> but it depends. But I, for again, good has no nuance. You just do good regardless. And uh, the world and the universe delivers for you on that. So, yep, she should uh, help the mugger. And hopefully the mugger apologizes and give her, gives back her stuff. <laughs> that's that's where I would go with that. All right. And you, could you, never, you would never guess my answer. Oh, uh, take the a reasoning. picture and video and laugh and walk away? No, of course not. You would uh, give, uh, guess Oh, try reasoning. to get their bag and then just leave, right? <laughs> that's a good one, actually. No, that was oh, good. Okay. I would say, I would, uh, I'd say that you definitely got to help them because they have your items. You want to get your items back. You don't You're want it to get destroyed mess. by the train. So definitely help the mugger. I mean, that's crazy not to. You want I'm your stuff pray back. For you in the new year. But what you would say, you go to the mugger and you the, be smart about it. Hey, toss that knife to the side. Then you'd be like, all right, now you can come closer. Grab the bag and then then you can help them. Looking good, yep. chief. Looking good. And then as good. soon as you help them, you give them a nice elbow to the back of the neck. Okay, Samurai. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you do. You probably have to call some people to help you because I would think once you help them, they're going to try to escape. So yeah, <laughs> you definitely got to. Like, oh, why you're still going to try to get them arrested? Of course, yeah. I want them to be uh, rightfully charged and convicted of the crime they committed. Mm. See, that's what I would. Even that, if that's they gave my, you back the bag and they said, "I'm sorry, I'm just having a hard time." They'd have to really give me think. money too, then. They'd have to pay you for yeah. saving them. Yeah, well, I'm going to report this. Don't, again, it depends on the type of compassion in your heart. Obviously, uh, you have very little. Uh, well, I didn't want them to learn. I mean, I don't think they've learned. Just I don't. They, they need to learn today, huh? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if that was enough, almost being killed by the train. I don't know if that really know if would enough. do it. They really, they have I don't to know. be dismembered a little bit, right? No, no, I don't know. I don't believe in the salt type of thing. That's too much to me. I just think they need to serve <laughs> their time. They got to pay up for the crime, like do community service. But yeah, like if the person offers to wash your car, for like you know the next year then you may just let it go wow the year 365 days uh, how much is your life worth i mean yeah Woo-hoo. isn't that crazy <laughs> you say i'd rather be run over by the train sir <laughs> <laughs> push me back over i mean yeah, see, that would make sense. Here. Yeah. see that would make sense Todd. you think they should just get off scotch-free they might have they got an saved. issue that was happening and yeah there's a lot going on it's really interesting i don't know if i'd want them to still be punished if they were really profusely <laughs> just, apologetic and they gave it back to me and they were really grateful for the help I don't know. It's that to me. It seems like a lot going on tonight that I would then want to be like, okay, let's go to the police station. Like, <laughs> yeah, let's go to let's go down to the precinct. 
person like, can take care of this. I'd rather have a glass of wine and call it a day. Really? Like, yeah. The person better buy me a drink. Yeah, then. that's what I'm saying. Like, I'd rather them buy me dinner and a drink and move on. But like, but that's almost worse because you know they're buying you stuff using money that they possibly robbed from someone else. That's what I'm saying. I might just <laughs> want to leave. And just that's why I want to. Yeah. That's why I want to get them processed, Tosh, because I want to make sure yeah, they know get them what in they the did. System. Yeah, I hear you. Well. Yeah, I mean it's tough, but it's tough. Yeah, have, that's a rough. That's a rough. Yeah, see, but they literally. All yeah, I know so is for sure me. I would help them. I beyond that, I don't know. You're 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 going. You're asking deep stuff here. I don't yeah. really think about that. See, it's not it's not so clear cut though. No. That's what these scenarios are about. Yeah, they. That's a woke and free moment for sure. Now this one's probably easier, but we'll see how you take it. Scenario uh-huh. three: Mo is a bartender who has seen his share of bar fights. This particular night, though, someone broke a beer bottle and waved it at a young lady. Mo has a shotgun under the table that he has never brought out before. What should Mo do in this situation? Wow, yeah, this is rough as well. Oh, because we're talking violence upon violence here. Yes. Uh, Wow, okay. First of all, Mo is Mo short for something. I'm just curious. No, it's not. But only I'm not. I don't even want to say where the reference comes from. We'll see if we'll get free day. She could know the reference. Okay, guys. But it comes from something, reference? something okay. really popular. And it's I'll just well I don't well not Moby Dick, huh? No. It's <laughs> okay. from a, well, it's from a, a cartoon. I'll say. Oh, okay. That's oh, Mo. Oh, maybe I think I might know. Because yeah. <laughs> no, I know you might cool. not know it as well. Okay. Interesting. But. Uh, you know, the feminist in me with my feminist hat on, I would say, you know, a woman is in danger. We got to protect her. So, you know, does does a cracked bottle warrant a shock? On your face? <laughs> uh, that's a really extreme <laughs> scenario. But at the end of the oh, day, man. I would first suggest Mo, the bartender, very firmly speak to this man and say, put that bottle down, sir. Step away from the woman or I will be forced to have to take out my shotgun and put it in your face. And wow. so maybe from those that harsh language <laughs> in and of itself, he will stop. But if he's too inebriated or if he's too impassioned, then he might have to take out that shotgun. My only issue is that with guns... When you take them out, right, there's a higher chance that you want to use them. So, uh, you know, oh, this, yeah. could, this could end very badly. Really, really. This could be kind of a wild, wild west situation. So, And there's uh, other people in the bar, too. It's not people. just like you might cut the one. woman and still, you know, so it's it's a lot of moving pieces. Again, I would first try to use your words, right? Like they taught us in second grade, use your words and see if we could verbally de-escalate the situation. Uh, also k- threaten to call the authorities, right? As a, as a, he's doing this in, in, in the presence of other people. He's a danger to others, you know, so that there might be some legal impl- criminal infractions he's, he's making right now at this point. So try to use your words and then last resort, take out that shotgun. Please keep it on. I don't know if those things have safeties or something, but please don't try to activate it, though. Even if you do take it out, try not to just be trigger happy, though. That's my answer. Ears? Mine is... The, well, uh, the well, first pieces, right? <laughs> yeah, and then <laughs> Terminator style. Then he could sit. I mean, then he better be on the run because yeah. he's gonna be sitting nice and pretty in a uh, jail cell for yep. a while. So yep. I don't know if that's the way to go. Yeah, no violence. No violence. <laughs> not would like not when it comes to that. Like he just he broke a beer bottle. We don't know what's gonna actually happen right now. Yeah. So but I'm I think the really first step for the woman. Though. The first step is you got to yeah you got to tell that person hey I'm not gonna stand for that. You need to. Put that down and you need to leave right now yeah. or I'm calling the police, you mm-hmm. know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Then if that person still didn't, I mean, you could probably punch him in the jaw okay. and knock him out or something. Okay. You know, do something else before bringing out the shotgun because it's just okay. a, it's a broken bottle. I mean, mm-hmm. and he probably doesn't even know like that you're observing him kind of doing this stuff. You know, mm-hmm. he's all drunk and just getting crazy and shouting. So maybe you can take him by surprise and... Just, like, at least get the weapon out of his hand and then yeah. also, you know, let other people know what's going on. Because I think most people would want to help in this situation mm-hmm. when they see, like, something's going to go down. Because that ruins everybody's night. If the yes. cops do have to come, like, you want to try to avoid that, yes. it's better just to get rid of this person who's there. So, hopefully, you get help from other people and you can throw them out. Mm-hmm. Bringing out that shotgun, yeah, that's going to be kind of really know. last resort. If he actually starts swinging, then it's like, uh-oh, Oof. maybe you bring it out and you, like... You cock it and hope that oh, that's enough to scare him. Oh, but gosh. 
it's not good because once you bring it out you're really supposed to use it it's not i know yeah that's so it's dangerous not a, oh it's gosh. not something you bring out just for fun and look, look he's never had to bring it out before so hopefully his other techniques would work is yes what I'm thinking. exactly so try not to bring out the shotgun yeah that would be that a little is extreme. definitely the lesson of the day <laughs> yeah <laughs> And with that, we are at that time again. It is coming to the end of our 122nd episode of Woke, Woke and Free. free. Mm, mm, mm. Guys, this was quite the episode discussing uh, would you give your life for a stranger? We want to know where do you stand on the issue? Make sure you've downloaded the Podbean app so you can share in the comments and join this Woke and Free conversation for Woke and Free Wednesday. Will we leave you hanging for what our next episode will be about? Drum roll, please. On our next episode, we will be doing another Woken Free Storytime episode, and it is called uh, Alexa Speaks Her Mind. Make sure you follow us on social media to follow along in the conversation, and make sure you tune in next week for Woken Free Wednesday to join the conversation at WokenFree.com. If you want to be a guest on the show to, or submit a topic for uh, conversation or thoughts, all of that good jazz, you know where to find us on our contact us page at WokenFree.com, which is W-O-K-E-N-F-R-E-E.com. If you want to holler at us on social media, you can easily find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Pinterest at Woken Free. If you have a book, a business, a service, you're looking to have curated ads on the Woken Free platform, again, find us on our contact us page at WokenFree.com. If you didn't already subscribe, please do share the episode and make sure you come back to join the conversation every Wednesday for Woken Free Wednesdays. Remember, Woken Free is more than a podcast. It is a way of life. Until next time, and make sure to have a happy new year.